Hi, everyone, and welcome back for another in my Cozy Things Chats series, uh, where I have a friend come on and they talk about the things that make life cozy for them. And I am really looking forward to you seeing this episode. I am joined by my friend, Shelly, who, Shelly, did you find me because of the Betsy Tacy Society? Yes, on YouTube. Okay. I was just searching on YouTube, Betsy Tacy. And that's kind of what started it because, you know, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like, like no one I know ever read those books. So I'm like, I can't be the only one because I knew about Betsy Tacy society. So I'm like, there's people out there. We just seem to be scattered all over the place. Yes. So, yeah. So that's what got me started. And then of course it's really, you know, become something that I look forward to so much and I have to compliment you because when I get, you know, sometimes it'll give me recommendations or suggestions, mm -hmm. you know, and I haven't been a subscriber to your channel, probably not quite a year. Mm -hmm. And I'll see a, a video and I'm like, oh, there's a new video. And it's from like six years ago. <laughs> and I'm like, she looks exactly the same. <laughs> you don't age. <laughs> Well, that's good. That's good yeah, to you, hear. Yes. And I'm sure I'll appreciate that even more the older oh, that yeah. I get. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be 57, and I wish I could say that. But I'm like, oh, it's a brand new video. And then I'm like, no, this is for a long time. <laughs> um, yeah. And so then where I felt like, you know, we were able to have conversations was through the Kindred Spirits Club yes. that I host. And that has just been so fun, you know, to kind of touch base every month and um, talk about what we thought about the book, whether, you know, it's kind of, we're, everyone's not sure how they felt about it. Like the girl, the limber lost. Um, right. uh, but then there are some that you were there, you were there from the start, right. For Emily of deep Valley. Yes. And everyone loved that. Yes. Um, I, I mean, and, and I love the recommendations, not only the oh, rereads, you. you know, the rereads are like, yes, I do want it. Or just, I've never even heard of that book. Yeah. And I enjoy it so much. Yeah. Oh, well, and it's so fun for me getting recommendations through the book community. I know that um, Amy from the channel, Amy of Hearthridge, just told me about a Kate Sarity book called A Tree for Peter, and it's a little Christmas book. It's a little bit over 100 pages, uh -huh. um, and I never would have heard about this otherwise. Right. Um, and I'm always looking for more things to read at Christmas. Yeah, uh, because I found, un unfortunately, tragically, I'm starting to get a little bit burnt out on Christmas movies, um, and so I'm now more, more than ever, relying on having good reading um, during right. November to right. feel festive. And I think you know, with Christmas time, it, you always think of traditional books or traditional yeah. movies. So yeah. it's so nice to hear of something that's either new or something you've never heard of yes. that maybe other people read every year, but you had never heard of it. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So I'm always looking for those. Yes. Uh, so I am looking forward to hearing your cozy things. So what is the first thing on your list? Okay. So the first thing on my list is pajamas and I oh. am wearing my pajamas. <laughs> so fun. I can't really get my screen lowered, but yes, I'm, I'm wearing pajamas because I'm like, well, that would be appropriate since yes. that's first on my list. And it's I'm honestly funny. surprised you're the first person to have pajamas on pajamas. your list. Pajamas. And they're, oh, well, they're so cute too, but they're, they're days of the week. When I was a kid, oh. I used to have, sorry if this is TMI, but I used to have underwear for days of the week and it yes. would have embroidered, you know, and I was one of those people I wanted to wear Monday's underwear on Monday. And, <laughs> and so when I came across this, it's from a, it's from a line called Nick and Nora, which I, the pajamas, wow. and mm -hmm. I can't, I don't know if they still sell them new, but I just buy them on eBay. I don't mind. I wash them. They're, yes. they're so comfortable by the time you get them. <laughs> but I, that's how I like them, you know, kind of broken in. But that's what this line is from. But it has days of the week all over it. And like, just like retro, you know, doing different things around. Yes. But yeah. Oh, sorry. My lighting's oh. so bad. But so I thought I'm going to be in my pajamas because that's first on my list. Now I've noticed on my list, a lot of things are what I find cozy now and what I found cozy when I was a kid. And 
the difference. Mm. And so for me, a big one is pajamas, because when I was a kid, I always wore what we called granny gowns and they had to be flannel. Well, in the winter. Yes. And now there is no way I could sleep in any kind of flannel. I mean, like I said, I'm 57 and there is no way I can wear flannel. So, and I miss it because it's, there's something very, like I can wear it around the house, but when it's time to get under the covers, I wake up just way too high. So my solution has been to buy summer pajamas, you know, all year long, and then just keep a cozy bathrobe at the foot of the bed. So when I get out of bed, you know, I'm cozy, but I don't wake up thinking, oh, I'm so hot. Turn the AC on. Yeah, Yeah. it's just funny how that kind of stuff changes, you know, like I remember when I was younger, I always felt cold. And so Mm -hmm. that's, you know, and I don't know if pajamas is more of a girl thing. You know, I'm in a family of all men. And when my boys were little, I was a stickler. You wear pajamas to go to bed. Mm. Something about changing your clothes and putting on something comfortable, just part of, and you know how kids love a routine, especially nighttime, you know, like there's just, and that's what really helps them just settle down and go to sleep. So now that my boys are grown and they come home to visit and I'm like, you're wearing shorts and a (laughs) t-shirt. Have I taught you nothing about the importance of pajamas and my husband's the same way and I'm like don't you you know don't you guys remember how nice it was to yes I, I'm thinking maybe college had something to do with that because when you're living in a dorm with a bunch of fraternity brothers they're not all walking around in, <laughs> in pajamas. No pajamas. it's very true that's very true yeah so that was what was first on oh and I do have a funny story about that so my maid of honor in my wedding uh, she tragically passed away a few years ago from cancer, oh. but she, she was in, she was my friend from college and she was in my wedding. And when she moved back home after graduating college, you know, she moved in with her mom. So she had extra money because she wasn't living out on her own and she would treat herself, you know, she'd go shopping maybe once a week, but she said she'd come home to show her mom what she bought. Her mom said, you would think as a kid, I never bought you pajamas the way you buy pajamas because I mean, how many pairs do you need? But I think everybody has something, shoes, purses, yeah. jewelry, but for her, it was pajamas. Oh, so I think for some people, indulgent. it's not a big deal, but to me, I'm all about pajamas. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I started wearing them regularly this summer, but now that it's cooler weather, I don't have any cooler weather pajamas. Cause I, I will, um, get a little bit cold, but I would never, I would never wear like flannel PJs. Yeah. It'd be too um, hot. Cause you, especially yeah. if you like blankets, you know, and I love blankets. Yeah. I love piling on blankets. Yeah. 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 So, and I know, um, a friend of mine, she said that sometimes on Sundays they'll in their house and her kids are older too. They just declare it pajama day oh. and they stay in their pajamas. If they don't have anywhere to go, they yes. just stay in their pajamas all day, especially oh, I think so when, fun. you know, you get a blizzard or some bad weather and you're not going to go somewhere anywhere, or if it's yeah. Christmas break or something like that. So oh, that was very cozy, fun. my first cozy thing. Oh, I love it. And what is your second cozy thing? Well, my second is what I call lamps versus overhead lighting. So to me, um, there's nothing like a lamp, like just that, you know, not nothing overhead, just lamps around a room. And I am loving these like Edison bulbs that they have now where you can, you know, they kind of look like the retro light bulbs. And I mean, it's kind of like very popular now, but that gives even more of a, I think, cozy feel to them. Yes. You know, and I notice if I'm doing something, making dinner, and I just want to put YouTube on, and maybe I search like cozy library ambience or something like that, you know, you can search it and it'll just have a picture. And sometimes it's thunderstorm, sometimes it's classical piano, but the, what attracts me to certain ones is just that cozy lighting, you know, Mm. just not the bright lights, but just as my husband will say, were you a vampire in another life? Like I'll be making dinner and I just have a few lamps on. He goes, how can you even see what you're doing? But there's something about, 
you know, and of course candles, I have a candle going here, but just candles and soft lighting, I think is just creates that mood, you know, yes. that yeah, it's so fun too that you say that because um, I just recorded a Cozy Things chat with my friend Mel and she had lamps on the list too. Aww. And they're yeah. really just overhead lights can feel so glaring. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like, I, mean, I don't know about your boys, but my boys, when they were young, they like to sleep with a lamp on. And so I used to go to, you know, stores and you can buy, you know, a blue light bulb or a green light bulb or yes. orange. And just so it's not bright in their room, but it just creates that. I think it makes them feel safe, you know, yes. safe and cozy. Yep. Yes. Yeah. We we have a night light, not a lamp, but um, but the night light, they definitely like to have that. Well, it's funny because when my kids would have friends sleep over, um, there were boys that were the total opposite. They said, I can't sleep with any kind of light. So I think it's just what you're used to. You know, they're like, mm -hmm. I have to have a dark room. I think my kids were always more a little scared, you know, so yeah. to them, it was something to know if you heard a noise where it was coming from or you could look. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, um, what's funny is I have a brother-in-law who he is, he has to have conditions just right for sleeping. And if there's light, he calls it light pollution um mm -hmm. her you know in the bedroom so I, I definitely like it dark um yeah I'm very oh I hate how particular I've become about sleeping conditions um oh, I think that is so true and I know for my husband and I when we got married I was used to sleeping with the tv on oh, and he didn't yeah. like that and now we have completely changed now I prefer to, you know, either read or nothing. Yes. And he likes falling asleep to the TV. Now I just went on a cousin's weekend with two of my female cousins. Our dads are all gone, but they were all brothers. Mm -hmm. and so we went on an overnight trip together and my one cousin declared, cause she and I shared a bed. Mm -hmm. She declared, I cannot sleep without the TV on. There's just, you know, there's just no, <laughs> there's no compromise so I tried to be the easygoing one. I'm like, okay, well, all night long, I kept waking no. up and I'm like, I think there, she, we had, I think we started out with golden girls, but all of a sudden I remember thinking, am I dreaming or is the show Reba really funny? Because Reba McIntyre's show was on, which I've never watched. But I remember waking up because I couldn't really get into a deep sleep because I don't like having the TV on. Yeah, I'm thinking, I think that was really funny what they just said. You know, it's almost like, are you dreaming or is it real? You know, but yeah, it's a very funny. funny show. Yeah, but it's so funny how some people, you know, like you said, it has yeah. to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, no. And yeah, uh, I know one, <laughs> one friend too, that I don't know how the habit got started. Maybe roommates had on bright lights. And so he put a t-shirt over his eyes, you know, to cover it up. And now he has to sleep with a t-shirt on his, on his face. Yeah. You get used to something and I'll tell you, and as, and if you do have trouble sleeping, that's even yes. more so you have to, you know, any, any disruption or any change makes yes. that part even worse. So, yes. and I know too, for when you talk about lamps is, lastly, and I'm sure everyone feels this way, is just sitting in a room with your Christmas lights on and nothing, oh. and no other lights, just, especially if it's yes. just the tree. Yes. There, that is the coziest, most peaceful feeling on, you know, at nighttime to just yes. sit there. And I don't even need, you know, music or anything. I just like to sit there and look at the lights and just take it all in, you know. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited now. I got excited all over again. To, to yes, sit just the tree. it's a very special, oh. I don't know, just a very special time. And I realize, you know, when we talk about this stuff, it's not that way for everybody. Not everybody, you know, right. maybe celebrates Christmas, but I'm sure they have something similar that they get that feeling of, yeah. you know, something you grew up with. I mean, my whole life, you know, we've always, so to me, I think that's a big part of it is the nostalgia of it too. Definitely. Oh, very nice. All right. Number three. So my number three cozy thing is the Kindred Spirits Book Club, because I just think like this series, I love this series too. I find it so cozy. Mm -hmm. If I feel anxious or nervous about something, I'll just watch an old one, 
you know, wow. I think there's quite a few that I probably haven't caught up on, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know how long you've been doing the series. It seems like it's been a while, but yeah, if I just need to feel, you know, and I love hearing what other people find to be cozy because sometimes it's something that I never thought about that. I'm like, maybe I'll try that, you know, yeah. just to calm myself down if I feel like I need it. Um, but yeah, there's just something about the, you know, it looks like Hollywood squares or something up on the screen and <laughs> one's like smiling and happy to be there. And most people like to, you know, talk for at least a few minutes about, you know, what they liked about the book or how it made them feel or how surprised they were at how much they liked it. Yeah. So I think it's just, there's a camaraderie there that, and a lot of the books of course are older books, you know, books that are out of print that, um, you know, I, I just think I have so many friends, but it just doesn't seem like there's a whole bunch that would want to sit down and read that kind of book. Like I have friends who are in book clubs, mm-hmm. but it seems like the majority of the time their book clubs are reading like the bestsellers or, you know, yeah. books that are popular right then and there, which is fine. But that's what I like about that. The kindred spirits is it's more about, you know, stepping back in time. Yeah. Reading books that, you know, aren't so popular. Yeah. And I I think with some of these bestsellers, people will be talking about them in 50 years, but most of them, people won't be talking about them in 50 years. Um, And so that's, that's the magic of reading older books is they have that staying power. Right. Um, and And I think too, there's a lot more books being written now, you know, so many. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's always been books that are written, but it just seems Mm -hmm. like as time goes on, the, the volume is just so many to pick from. So, yes. Yeah. I really appreciate the, the group of people that come to the kindred spirits book club because, um, within a group, you know, I don't think we've had a man attend yet. It's, it's funny. It's all <laughs> ladies, but there is such a range of ways that a book can be experienced. Yes. And, um, so I just love, you know, someone will bring up a point. I never thought about that aspect mm-hmm. of the book or that character. Um, I'm going to be thinking about them from that angle, um, and seeing what I think. So always lots of food for thought. Um, yeah, there's, it's like, it just gives me a, a a cozy feeling just even when it's getting ready I'm like oh it's quarter to two. Oh, that's <laughs> I'm like so getting all ready you know yeah it's and oh. it's great you know it's in this day and age it's nice to find something that you can just kind of look forward to that's just lower key you know you're not going anywhere yes. and even you know especially with the quarantine and stuff to be able to connect with yeah. people and yeah. Yeah, it would be nice, you know, if we could meet all in person, but like you said, it's really nice. Just click a button and, yeah, uh, and we're all kind of in a room together, you know, yes. and I yes. even find myself like looking at people's books in the backgrounds. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, they have a bookshelf too. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. So, yep. Oh, very cool. And uh, so now cozy thing number four. Yes. And for me, this is antique shops. Um, just walking in an antique store just gives me a feeling of coziness because I mean, I've always, I think I've always been an old soul, even when I, you know, from the time I was a kid, you know, Mm -hmm. I babysat at a very young age. I used to like to go and stay at my grandparents. I had a a grandmother that lived out in the middle of nowhere and Uh I, I would go out there and stay with her and, you know, most of the other grandkids didn't want to because they thought it was boring. She didn't have cable. I mean, this is way more, <laughs> you know, in the 70s. She, but I, there was just something about it. Her house was very old and very small mm-hmm. and quaint and the floors were kind of slanted. And, you know, it was, oh. it, her husband had built it. So it, it looked almost wow. like a little, you know, cabin or something. But I just used to love to go out there and stay even when I was in grade school, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just something about some people are drawn to vintage, you know, Mm -hmm. and so for me, um, my birthday's in December. So we, my husband and I started a tradition where as a birthday present, he takes me out antiquing. Wow. Which is great because we don't have a lot of similar interests, but that is something that we share. And my only complaint is that 
when we walk in a in an antique shop, he can make he can get through it in about 30, 35 minutes. Uh-huh. And I'm still on the first booth because I'm examining every like he sort of knows what interests him. So he kind of yes. just and I'm just still like looking at books and records and you know, and <laughs> I'm like, don't rush me. It's my birthday. I want to take my time. Well, and it is because the way they're they're organized, I mean, it's so densely packed. Yes. You know? And there's one not far from us that it's a big, huge room, but there are booths. So, okay. you know, people set up booths and then I think, you know, you know, they rent the booth. And so if they sell stuff out of the booth, it goes to that seller, you know. Okay. So, you know, some booths are definitely more interesting to me as to what I'm interested in. But one thing that uh, happened was I went to this booth in the back and they had one of those um, book display, those vintage book displays. Like if you walked in a public library and they would have like the book kind of open, you know, not the ones you see now, but, and they had a bunch of yearbooks on there. And so the town I grew up in is about 40 minutes from here. Mm -hmm. So I started looking through and I see a yearbook from... And it's called the Bulldog. So that was our mascot, the Meadville Bulldogs. That's what we were called. So I'm like, oh, you know, this, I thought I'd look through it. And don't I find my dad in there? <laughs> Get out. I know. Here I am in a book, st- you know, in an antique store. And I just happened to find a year when my dad was in high school. Wow. And so because it was my birthday and because he's gone, it was just so special because I'm like, it's like he was saying happy birthday here I am so of course I had to buy it you know yeah my dad was in it so that was such a great memory from antique shopping you know I don't normally buy antique yearbooks yeah yeah that one I'm like that's a very special instance yeah and it was just so coincidental because there were only a couple from that high school. Like they had all the high schools around the area and different counties, but just a couple. So for it to be that, I can't remember what it was like, 1961 version. Wow. So cool. Yeah. Oh, how cool. And um, yeah, so that's kind of it for the, for the uh, antiques. I do like, usually I try to pick something out. That's kind of like my birthday thing. You know, you get to pick something out that you're, and when we first started doing this tradition, I kind of knew what I wanted, you know, oh, I'm looking for one of those old irons that they used to heat up on the stove, you know, Mm -hmm. and then I found one, or I'm looking for an antique typewriter because I'm a secretary. So then I found one of those. I have an antique school bell. I mean, so almost, I feel so blessed. So almost every thing that I think I've wanted I have one of those old phones on the wall that, you know, has the black thing that you hold up to your ear and the black thing. that you Oh, how your fun. Ear. Yeah. And it's really in nice shape. It's hanging on our wall in the kitchen and wow. you can still crank it. And you, the wiring is still in there. Yeah. it's wow. really neat. That and makes that me think fun. of that scene. And it's a wonderful life when he's yes. talking to Sam on the phone. Yes. Yes. There's so many. And, you know, that's one thing Greg and I talk about is who, who else has picked up this phone? and turned this, you know, and it said Erie Railroad on it. So you kind of wonder, wow. you know, like, you know, was this it, it, at someone's like at an office in a railroad or something? So oh, it's, okay. and it says, you know, push to talk, release to listen. It's just so cool. Wow. Um, and my husband did get me um, a, a candle, a candle extinguisher for a church. So it's on this big, long handle. Yes. Um, and then it has the curve at the end, you know, that's metal. Yeah. And so you can reach up. And we had seen it. And I commented how I thought it was kind of cool. And he said, well, where would we put that? And I said, I don't know. You know, it's really large. It's really yeah. cool. Well, then he went back and got it and surprised me. So oh. when he brought it out Christmas morning, he had wrapped it. And the boys were helping him carry it. And I mean, it's long. They, all three of them were carrying it in the room. And we have high ceilings in the one room with ceiling fans. And I'm thinking, I think he bought me, you know, something to clean the ceiling fan. Like, you know how people talk about getting household cleaning things for, for holidays. Yes. So I, I'm like, oh, this must be one of those things that you can reach up <laughs> real high and clean. And I couldn't believe it when I opened oh. it. Yeah, it was 
so those not only is is it a special thing to have around the house but it's just a memory too of yeah. what a surprise it was to get that or where we were shopping when we found it you know it's just there's so much to it that is so cool yeah so. oh yeah I think um maybe part of it too is when you go you are, know you're going to be surprised maybe at some of the things that you'll you'll find yeah and of course too I mean for me it's like oh I had one of those you know so that's what's cool yeah. too you know I, I just saw a youtuber talk she was showing what she got at the thrift store and she got a Tupperware yellow like spaghetti strainer you know for in the sink but it was the exact one that they had when she was growing up, that goldish oh. kind of yellow. And it was in great shape. She paid yes. like 50 cents for it, you know, but she said, I was so thrilled because it just took me right back to a certain time, remembering my mom making spaghetti with that exact oh. strainer, you know? Yeah. Wow. Have you ever seen um, the Santa Claus two? Yes. Do you remember the scene when it's the teacher staff party and it is dead. Like everyone is hating their lives being at the staff party. And then he uses up some of his magic and brings them all their favorite childhood toys in mint yes. condition. Yes. And it's just the best party after that. Everyone that would be that loving really the would nostalgia be. and just their inner child comes out. Um, yes. And, and I, I love think that scene. there was a Seinfeld episode where maybe Jerry was dating a girl whose dad had some kind of a retro toy collection. And so wow. they made him keep dating her because they wanted to go over to the house so that they could, they could play with the toys. Elaine was like using the easy bake oven. <laughs> And she goes, the cup or the cookies are ready. And they're like, aren't those mixes like 40 years old? <laughs> but it's just, it is. And I did save a lot of toys that were my boys' favorites for that very, even though they're not vintage or anything, but for that very thing. Cause I'm like, if yeah. I ever have grandkids, what if yeah. I can't find the exact same whatever that I'm very like I like familiar yes. and you know I'm I sometimes feel old but I'm like oh they redid that I like the original better you know so yes no I feel the same way and um I do like actually Fisher Price has they've made a whole line of kind of older toys that they are are remaking and we have a couple of them one is the really cute I think it's supposed to be a beagle um, that it kind of like bounces while you, while you pull on its you, wheels. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. we have the little telephone and the, uh, thing that you pull the string and it says, you know, the cow says moo or, and you mm -hmm. can rotate it through. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I have to say, I think might be target where I saw yeah. like a line of toys and I don't know what the name was like something with nostalgia or something like that, where yeah. I was like, wow, this is really cool. They're bringing back like the original version of something. Yeah. Yes. Like yeah. the popcorn popper that the kids push around, you know, yeah. First Which, to walk. My mom got that. And I have to say that is a great grandparents house toy. Yes. They're very loud. <laughs> Well, and my kids used to pretend like they were vacuuming with it. So it would literally just be like popping, popping, pop. It doesn't just, it doesn't stop. No, but it's not like they're walking with it. They're just pulling because yes. they like the sound. Yes. Yeah. No, we have a wooden vacuum and I like that, but I know it's not as exciting as walking around with something that pops. Right. The louder, the better when, when it bothers. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that would, um, uh, let's see, what do I have here? Oh, so I'm sorry. We're not on my fifth thing yet, are we? No, I think uh, we can do the fifth thing now. Yeah, um, I think so. Going in with the antique shops is old movies. And I mean, I have been drawn to black and white movies since I was a kid. I remember watching them with my grandma. And, you know, back then, if something even remotely good came on, like an old Betty Davis movie in the middle of the day on a Saturday, you're like, this is a jackpot because we get like three Aww. channels. And usually there's, you know, I don't know if it was part of the old soul in me, or sometimes I think with the black and white movies like Rebecca, I mean, it just oh. creates this atmosphere, this spooky atmosphere that just cannot be beat. Yes. And that's another thing where I feel old because I'm like, we have It's a Wonderful Life, you know, on DVD. 
and you can either watch the black and white version or the color <laughs> version. And I'm like, well, there's not even a choice, you know? <laughs> And I know that Jimmy Stewart was adamant. He was like, please don't colorize. It's a wonderful life. He didn't mind movies being filmed in color, but what he didn't like was the integrity of black and white films being altered by colorizing them. Right, right. I think the only time I liked it is probably my favorite movie of all time, if I had to pick one, is Wizard of Oz. And when oh. it's in black and white, and Miss Gulch is so scary, I remember being so scared of her. And then, yeah. but once she wakes, she steps out of the house and it's Oz and it's in color. Yes. Yeah, that's that's probably the most acceptable to see both in one movie. Well, yeah, and I think that was, you know, the, in, the intended experience is to have that big contrast. What I love too is I know, my mother-in-law, she didn't realize that half, you know, a lot of the movie was in color because she saw it on a black and white TV as a kid. Aww. And then when she was older, she thought, oh, my, wow, this is, I thought this movie was great already, but. <laughs> right. Between the really yellow brick road and Emerald City, that right there is yes. just, yeah. Yeah. And the red poppies and yeah. Yep. I know. So that's, I, I think, you know, um, just the whole and, and I think there's something that comes out of a TV when a movie's in black and white. It's almost like an like an aura or something yeah. that just feels cozy to me. You know, it's just comforting, and um, you know, it kind of you know takes me back to um, just the coziness of things when it comes to movies. Like as a kid going to the drive-in, you know, putting wow. on your you're putting on your pajamas. And my dad would bring a station wagon home because he worked at a car lot and just, you know, putting the sleeping bags in the back mm. and popping popcorn. You know, we didn't really go to the um, concession stand. I mean, mm -hmm. my parents were young. My, my dad was the only one that worked. So my mom would pop the popcorn and make the Kool-Aid at home and we would have it in our car. But I just even remember too, you know, just that whatever comes out of a movie and there's something about a drive-in too, that there's just a comfort to it, you know, and the crackling. Yeah. yeah. So I think older movies definitely is up there for me. Um, now, was, was this a uh, kind of drive in where they would have like a family film first and then there would be a movie for grown ups where most of the kids would be asleep? Because I know there used to be some of those. Yes. And I, I, it was like that. And of course, this in the 70s, they were super popular. Like we had probably three to pick from. Wow. And now, you know, I mean, we've taken our kids to maybe just a couple because yeah. there's only one around here and it's not very close. Mm -hmm. But when my mom used to live out of town when my boys were young, she lived in a, a town in Pennsylvania um, that had a more than one screen. And I mean, the line would oh. be the line to get in that place was down the road. They would, they would sell out. But what was nice about that is you didn't have to try and stay, you know, for four hours or, you know, whatever, you know, if yeah. they would have different screens up and based on what kind of movie you wanted to watch is where you parked. So yeah. if you were there with little kids and you just wanted to see a, you know, a family friendly movie, you'd go over to one area. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they would have, you know, those booths where you buy the glow in the dark thing. And, you yeah. know, I mean, it was just, just a really nice step back in time atmosphere. Yes. Because I now, think actually, I mean, um, kind of, yeah. Have you, have you been to, um, there was one, uh, when I used to live in the Pittsburgh area in Moon Township, um, and it had multiple screens and it was really funny uh, my husband and I, our first anniversary, it was a, a series of like just disasters in our, in our plans. And, um, part of one of the things that happened is our GPS just froze up. You know, this is when it wasn't on our phone. Yeah. And so we just kept driving around, hoping it would figure out where we were and could take us to the drive-in movie theater. And then by the time it, uh, figured it out, we got there so late that the only movie that still had tickets available was Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer. <laughs> and so I was like, well, we're doing it. We came here and we stayed there about five minutes. And I'm like, we have to go. I cannot stay for this. I've never um, even heard of that movie. Oh, it, it was so, I mean, just so violent. And just the five minutes that I saw, I was like, this is not a Kate Howe movie. <laughs> yeah. And plus you're thinking, well, if that's the only one that is still 
yes. open, then there's probably a reason. Yeah. But um, I know you think you're there just for the experience, you know, <laughs> because it's a drive-in. How bad yes. could the movie be? And back yeah. in the day, you could be pretty safe, you know, going to a drive-in movie in like the 70s when I used to go. Mm -hmm. um, but now you just never know what they're going to play. <laughs> Yes, I did. Um, although I did have a good experience when I went, I took my little cousins and we went to see Brave. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a positive drive -in yeah. experience. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, like I said, the nice thing about Pennsylvania too is it, not too far from my mom, but we never made it to that one was I think either the first or second oldest drive-in in the United States that's been in continuous, wow. I think it's in like Orfield, Pennsylvania. Wow. Um, Cause she used to live by Allentown. That's where she lived okay. at the time. Mm -hmm. And so Becky's drive-in in, I think it was called Bethlehem PA is where they had the bunch of screens. And that was more like family friendly. Mm -hmm. and, and this older one, I think they only had one screen but so much of it was original you know, in just, you know, driving through the gates, you know, to drive up yeah. was the old. So it was, you know, for, for people who like things like that, like stepping back in time, that was the atmosphere. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, very nice. All right. So are we at number six? Yeah. So I, I this again goes back to childhood, but it, I, it's foods from your childhood. Like there's something mm -hmm. about eating something that you loved as a kid. And it might not be something that tastes super great to you now. Do you know what I mean? You're like, why did I think this was so great? Or like the things that I hated to eat when I was a kid, you know, I'm like, like I'll say to my mom, oh, will you make cabbage rolls? And I remember when she, when I was a kid, she'd make cabbage rolls. And I'm like, oh, I don't even want to eat. You know, I just take the cabbage off and try to eat whatever's inside. But now that's a kind, and you're thinking, why would anyone like this? But your taste buds definitely change, you know, yes. with age. But like for me, you know, like there was certain, we hardly ever ate out. That was one thing. Mm -hmm. I remember even for our birthdays, we just didn't have the money. So, mm -hmm. you know, instead of eating out, my mom would say, what do you, you get to pick what I make for dinner. So mm -hmm. like for me, it was always scalloped potatoes and ham because I love, and she made, you know, made it from scratch, you know, it wasn't, mm -hmm. you know. But I think too, there were things like she would make what we called, we called them hoagies, you know, but like I said, but just, I think it was, you know, the Isley's ham and the brand of provolone and the oh. lettuce. And the, there was something about, I mean, you could never buy that stuff now. You know what I mean? The buns that she used, the Italian dressing that she used. I'm like, you, I could, I've tried so many times to make that oh. hoagie and I just can't. But so there's something about that memory Mm -hmm. of just the way something tasted to you when you were a kid mm. and a lot of it too is local like in my hometown there's a custard place like homemade custard so mm. that's like you know what I mean it's just like traditional things that are just specific to your area there's yeah. something about saying yes let's go to Eddie's footlong and get a footlong hot dog and then drive down the road and go to Hank's frozen custard oh. and that's like you're a kid again you know yes and yeah. the buildings have not changed. They purposely keep them the same. You know, they're wooden buildings that they just repaint, but they purposely keep that old feeling mm. so that not only can they, you know, say we've been around for 60 years, but, you know, people who, who have moved away. I mean, I see my friends on Facebook that I graduated with that have moved away, that if they come back to their hometown, they're going to Hanks and Eddie's because it's just... There's that feeling of, you know, being at home in your hometown. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, a big part of that is food, I guess. You yeah. Know? Just the flavors and, and you know, um, even just things like uh, where my boys live in Cleveland, there's still a place called, I think it's called Swenson's or Swanson's, where you pull up in your car and they still bring the food and put the tray on your window. Oh. And, you know, you have a milkshake and French fries mm -hmm. and sit in your car. And it sounds so silly when you think about it. You're just sitting in your car with a tray on your window. What's so great about that? But again, it's something we did as a kid. So, you yeah. know, it just gives you that feeling, that cozy feeling of, this is something I did as a kid, you know? Yes. Yeah. It's one, one dish that, um, it's so funny. You now I'm like, Hmm, like I, and I, I still kind of love it though, 
uh, but it's really not that gourmet. My dad used to make us scrambled eggs with chopped up hot dogs <laughs> in it. And it is, it's so, it's very not gourmet, not cosmopolitan, but I still kind of love it. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it kind of makes sense because, you know, you have scrambled eggs and bacon or, you know, yeah. so it's still kind of Yes. Thing. Well, and I know when dads make dinner, sometimes like if moms, my mom used to play bingo once a week. Mm -hmm. So you weren't getting any, anything that was too complicated, you know, when your dad was cooking yes. dinner for everybody. Yeah. My dad, he would put, he would like toss some left, leftovers together and stir fry and he would call it stir fry a la dad. Uh, <laughs> and and I, whatever goes in there goes in there. <laughs> yes. Although there is something about throwing everything in a skillet that makes it taste better. I don't know what it is. Yes. No, I agree. <laughs> um, what the story that I love too is my grandfather, he was very like stereotypical 1950s dad, you know, did he ever change a diaper? I don't really know. And apparently my grandmother came home from him babysitting my mom and he, he had put her, this is when she was maybe a year and a half. Okay. And he had her in a little playpen. It wasn't, it wasn't a, what do I want to say? You know, it wasn't a pack and play, you know, like one of those, it was like, just, she was in, there was a little fence and, and he had, um, he was trying to watch a Steelers game because he was a big Steelers fan. We're Steelers and, fans. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or Steelers. Um, and so he had, um, there was a mobile like above. And so he had a reaching stick that whenever she would fuss, he would shake the mobile with the reaching stick and toss some animal crackers in. <laughs> and that's my grandmother came in. That was the way he kept her occupied. I mean, she was happy. Yeah. And safe. You know, he knew and where safe. she was. Yeah. You know, he didn't have to go in search of, is she getting into something or <laughs> if the, if, if the mom comes home and the kid's still in one piece, then I guess the that's about what you, you're so excited to get out. You're just happy that you yes. come home and they're in I yes. know. And that kind of takes me to, you know, when we talk about foods that you had as a kid, if, if your mom makes something a certain way, like I remember yes. when my husband made the boys cinnamon sugar toast. So I just make it the way that I grew up with it. You know, I cut it the way we cut it. Mm -hmm. put the butter on first then I always put the cinnamon and I put the sugar and I can't remember what Greg did I don't know if he mixed the cinnamon and the sugar Ooh. or maybe he might have put the sugar on first or mm -hmm. but he said as soon as he set it down they both said this is not how mom makes cinnamon sugar toast and he's like it's the same ingredients it's toast with cinnamon and sugar on it and they're like this doesn't taste like mom's now is it possible did so did you make oven cinnamon sugar toast no we just use the toaster because my mom makes an oven cinnamon sugar toast that is so good and it's that sounds delicious. like crunchy and crispy on the top so a little bit like you know the coating you would get on creme brulee oh um Oh, yeah. that sounds really good. See, I never even yeah. thought to do that. I think it was the order that he made the layers. That's how, I mean, they were really little, but I mean, I think, you know, even if it's cut different, you know, they kind yeah. of, like I said, that's back when they're young, they really like things. They don't really like change, Oh, you know, not at all. No. And yes. so I think that was just a big part of it. And I even remember, you know, if I was out later and my husband would say to my younger son, you need to get your bath. And he would, you know, call me on my cell phone and leave me a message. And he would always say his name, mom, this is Brett. Well, I know who it is. And he says, dad says that I can't wait until you get home, but only you can get the bubbles at the right level. So call me back. I know. And it made me feel so good, but he, he did not want Greg to start his bath because he didn't think that he would do the bubbles. Right. You know, I mean, he was little, but it was the key. I wish I still had that message because oh. it was the dearest thing. Yeah. Oh. And I don't know why he wanted me to call him back. I think he wanted me to talk Greg out of it. <laughs> he can wait until I get home. I think that's what he was hoping. Um, all right. So, so then are we to number seven or eight? Seven. Oh, seven. okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So again, I feel like I'm just saying the same things over and over, but it smells. 
Mm. And um, I have this book, so I wanted to show you. It's called Nostalgia. And it's all about the science of how you can smell something that maybe you don't smell all the time, you know, and you can immediately go back to a certain point in your life. A lot of times when you're a kid, you know, or it talks about like the smell of a bowling alley. Like there's a yes. smell, there's a smell to a library. There, I mean, that's a big one for me when I get an old book. Definitely. And that, that just creates this cozy feeling of something that you've done or that you still like to do, but there's a smell that triggers a memory. And it does have like some scratch and sniff in it. So oh, you know, there'll be things like grapes pop, you know, and there's a scratch and sniff. Mm -hmm. And what does that take you back to? And um you know, even, you know, and it's not just, like I said, not just smells of food, but, you know, the smells of, um, uh, there's a movie that I absolutely love called Hope Floats. With oh my Bullock. goodness. I love that movie. I love that movie. Oh. And when her mom passes away and she is in her mom's closet and she's going through oh. the dresses because she's looking for something to wear to her mom's funeral and she chooses one and she holds it up and smells it and just breaks down. And I'm like, I know exactly what she's feeling because there are smells that remind you of people and it can be yeah. on clothes. It can be in their house. You know, people talk about walking into grandma's house and has a, yeah. how it has a certain smell. Um, but I, um, I remember this is kind of a funny story, but when, when my husband's, when my mother-in-law passed away, her mm -hmm. sister's girls wanted one piece of clothing from Graham or from aunt Pam. So they all came and picked something out that they could have that would remind them of her. And the one, her one niece, her name's Shelly also, she picked out pajamas. So she took them home and she put them on and she's watching TV and she looks down and it has a cigarette burn in it because she was, she was a smoker. And she went, oh, Grandma Pam, or Aunt Pam, I think Grandma Pam, because that's what my boys called her, but she's like, oh, Aunt Pam, this just takes me, I'm, you're here with me. <laughs> but I think that's when that, when that happened in that movie, I thought, I know exactly what she's feeling. Yeah. Because, and you know, for dresses like that, that are, well, you know, if it's a dry clean dress, you might wear it more than once because you don't want to have to dry clean it every time. So it holds a person's smell, you know, to yeah. them. And so um, I know um, that my sister-in-law moved out to Thailand and mm -hmm. she recently had from Seattle and she had um, things that she had, you know, kept from her parents' house because they're both gone that she had put in storage. And I think they've been in storage probably three years. And she finally had you know, had it shipped out to her in Thailand. And when she opened up the box, she said, I was in my childhood home. Like there wow. were the smells that came from, especially being in storage, you know, just mm -hmm. certain things that, you know, and, you know, I guess I think that feels cozy. You know what yes. I mean? Just like taking you back to something. Yes. Two that I really love are freshly mown grass. Mm -hmm. Love that. Me too. Um, and walking by houses when there's a laundry cycle going. And so out of the vent comes the fresh laundry smell. Oh, yes. I love it. And I know um, in our old house, the first house we lived in that the kids were lit, like were born in, and it was an older neighborhood. And the neighbor next door just became like a second mom to me. Mm. And she had a clothesline. So she would let me hang my sheets out on the clothesline. Um, in the summertime. And I just remember when I would put the sheets back on the bed, because that's something my mom did. It just, that smell just made the bed even cozier because it had been out in the sunshine drying. Yep. I want a clothesline because I hear from everyone who has a clothesline, how amazing everything smells when you air dry it. Yeah. And I don't have one now. And mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, for me, it was mostly like, there's certain things that, you know, like jeans, I don't know that I necessarily, because they're literally like stiff as a board and I, you know, <laughs> jeans aren't the most comfortable thing anyway, That's but true. when it comes to some, to bedding, I think, you mm -hmm. know, there's just something, especially the sheets about hanging them out. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, th those aren't 
that popular anymore. You know, oh, you don't really see yeah. them like you used to. Yeah. No, you don't. Yeah. So I think the smells was kind of the, the next thing for cozy. Very nice. Yeah. And so number eight, and this is again going back, but I had recipe cards. So, you know, recipes can be so special because especially because of handwriting. I think if the person is gone and it's a something that you remember them making and you remember how it tasted and how it smelled, and then you see their actual handwriting on the recipe card, because I have one that was, I'm probably not going to be able to get, but it's my grandma's handwriting, oh. you know, the old fashioned handwriting. Yeah. And what's funny is she wrote, Dick's favorite cake icing. Like it's not, and that's my, that was my dad's name. So it's not, you know, uh, chocolate frosting or <laughs> strawberry. It's Dick's favorite cake Aww. icing. It doesn't give you any clue of what flavor it is. That's yes. how she classified it was that it was, you know, she had four Aww. kids and it was his favorite. And, um, you know, what cracks me up too is what, you know, Crisco is one of the ingredients. <laughs> I'm like, oh never my heard goodness. of Crisco in <laughs> and I Crisco think, butter I mean, and sugar, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean it's I guess kind of like using lard or butter. Yes. So there you go. I know. So I, and when any I even have one here and oh geez. Oh, that's worse. But this one is was tight, it tight? which really cracks me up because I mean I don't know people that type recipes, you know, in the typewriter that just kind of cracked me up. But um, I, the reason why I have this one is because it's called pinwheel cookies, which were my, my dad's favorite. My dad liked everything real plain. Like, you know how some people, the more, the better, like he, I remember, you know, he would say, well, when we put cookies out for Santa, let's just put out the sugar cookies that have no icing, you know, with a tall glass of milk. Like and, I've and heard, like, you know, I have like that, oh, good authority. That's what Santa likes. Yeah, because the plainer the better. Like I don't think oh, he had much funny. of a sweet tooth. So I think like when we would get donuts, you know, we always wanted, you know, icing or glazed or and my dad would go, I just want a couple, get me a couple plain cake donuts. Like <laughs> but I think he liked to dunk them in his coffee. But you oh, know, it's just yeah. funny. So pinwheel cookies, you know, I my cousin found this in my grandma's recipe box and gave it to me because she knew it was my dad's favorite cookie. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm going to make them in memory of my dad. I'm going to make them. And I'm like, these are so plain. Yes. They're just, you know, I'm like, ew. Oh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they were was... two different colors. Like you made, I think you made um, two different layers and put one layer and then you rolled them up and cut them and it looked like a pinwheel. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I just... <laughs> I think things were much simpler back then too. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of cracks me up how, but I just think there's something about, you know, and, and even if they have like, I think there's Crisco stains on this one, you know, the, you know, the marks of being used over and over again in a, um, and I know, you know, a lot, I use my phone a lot for recipes, you know, just like a lot of people do, but once in a while, I really enjoy just pulling out a card or wow. my mom has been giving me some of her recipes, like for certain things that are our favorites. And she writes them in her handwriting. Mm. She, and I love it, but she really has the worst handwriting. <laughs> I so want to say to her, you know, she writes in cursive and it's super sloppy. And I yeah. want to say, mom, I don't know if I'm going to be able to read this. <laughs> if, I, if something ever happens and you're no longer here, I don't know if I can make this based on the, so the handwriting. Funny. So yeah, so that was, um, so oh, we're on nice. number nine, which again goes back to childhood <laughs> and it's books, just books from your childhood that, mm. you know, I just grabbed a couple here, the best love doll. And I remember this oh. book because the moral of this story is, and I won this, our little school used to have an outside fair where they had games, almost like a little carnival out in the schoolyard mm -hmm. and you could go from booth to booth and win prizes. And I won this book as a prize. Wow. But what I loved about it is it's about a girl that gets invited to a party and you have to bring one doll. And she has all these great dolls, but she ends up taking the, the one she loves the most, which is the most beat up. 
you know, it's just mostly like a rag doll. And, you know, she had dolls that could do things that were real pretty. And she chose to take that one and it won the prize for the best love doll. You know, and here I am talking about being so girly. My two favorite books from childhood are both about, you know, girly things, dolls. And then I have the peculiar Miss Pickett, which I loved this book. It was about a babysitter that had magic. So when the kids' parents went, oh, I just, I used to love this. Oh, and these are the fun. kind of books that I thought I would read to my kids one day. And they're like, mm, no, I tried. It's like, it's like the Wizard of Oz. I'm like, we're going to watch mommy's favorite movie from when she was a kid. And they're like, can we turn this off? You oh, know, and I'm like, yes. you're supposed to love it. Like I did. Yes. It's supposed to be this magical bonding experience between us. So there's a coziness from your own childhood, but then of course there's a coziness from now that my boys are grown, you know, yeah. I, I remember, you know, my youngest, especially we'd read the same books over and over. I'm like, we have so many books. I just want to read, you know, the same ones, you know, and so you just kind of know them by heart, but I think there's just something about the familiarity of the same book being read over and over that again, it's helps you fall asleep. It gives you that cozy feeling and Yep. So I think books for me and, and childhood books, especially there's a coziness to childhood books that, you know, is just separate from the other kind. Yeah. And have you, did you start reading Betsy Tacey as a kid? Yeah. Yes. Oh yes. I, I was probably in grade, in grade school. Mm -hmm. My mom, I mean, this was a different time, you know, and my mom would drop me off at the library and I was, you know, probably third grade. But it was, you know, yeah. you drop, I went right down into the basement where the children's library was. And that's where, um, you know, I would spend hours there. You know, yeah. I think I would go to the pay phone when I wanted to be picked up and she would come back and get me. But that's where I found them. And that's where I started reading them. Oh. So, I mean, at that point, they were probably, what year were they from the 40s, right? I think the 40s onward. Yeah. yeah. So they were probably about 30 years old at that point because mm -hmm. that was in the 70s. And then I've just loved them ever since, ever since, oh. even in my 20s, I would read them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. For a while they were out of print. And then Which I think it was a very dark time for Betsy Tacey fans. And it was before, uh, you know, ordering used books online was so yes. accessible. Yeah. And we didn't so, even have the internet. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's so, you know, I just garage. remember it. mm -hmm, it's exactly right. And I think it was Barnes and Noble that I went to one time and I, even before I had kids, I would go down in the children's section, you know, and I think I remember seeing like Herper trophy or something was the publisher yeah. and they put oh. out a set and, um, I was just thrilled because most libraries have discarded them at this point. So, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I know we yeah. need to, um, we need to keep telling librarians about them. Yes. I think that's, what's important. That's what Betsy Tacey society tries to do is keep the yes. memory alive because, yes. you know, it's nice once in a while to see a younger person join in on the mm -hmm. discussions because, you know, a lot of people haven't heard of them or yeah. people who have daughters who are teaching them so that when they have kids, it'll just keep getting passed on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, and I'm, uh, you know, I have two nieces who live uh, 10 minutes away. And I know when my, when do you think actually I should ask, when is the right age that I could start reading aloud to Lily? You know, I mean, I think it depends on the, the child, because like okay. I say, I'm not saying I was super smart. I always, especially at a young age, did good in school because I just loved it. I loved school. I loved going. Mm -hmm. I loved reading. So I think if you enjoy, if reading is a thing for you, which it always was for me when I, I mean, when, when the book order came in, the scholastic book order, oh. I was beside myself. Yeah. Um, so if you enjoy reading, you know, my brother was not a reader. He liked to play sports, but I think you become pretty advanced. I know, I think you've talked about your son with that, how much his reading has advanced because he enjoys it so much. Yes. And so I think it depends on the child, but I mean, I think I was, I really think I was reading some of those in like third grade. I mean, to read okay. out loud to someone, I think they could be much younger. Okay. Because so maybe... if they have the attention span, you know, yes. even just read like a chapter at a time. I remember my third grade teacher yeah. reading us Charlotte's Web and we looked forward every day oh. at a certain time, she'd read us one chapter and we and loved you it. still remember it. That is yes. such a memory for you. I remember the way she sat in front of the classroom, the way she held the book, how much yeah. I loved 
listening to her and it, we all loved it. Yep. And I remember the one that I remember that way is Little House in the Big Woods in third oh, grade. And um, love it was so books. comforting. And yes. what's funny is some of the kids in the class would be too cool to like opt to read books on their own, but they didn't look bored, you know, when, when she was reading aloud. And I yeah. think maybe it's different to have somebody read it aloud to you than maybe you're daunted by kind of the length of a book. Yeah, and I think some people just need to be nudged a little more. If they can get into a book, then they finally, it finally clicks to them. Oh, I'm actually don't want to put this book down. I mean, there are times before I had kids, I'd be up till two in the morning because I couldn't put a book down, you know, because (laughs) that's, that's the kind of, and, and, but for me, it never had to be encouraged because I just loved books from the very start. You know, I just, I, I would read all summer when we were on summer break, yeah. I would read books, but I think for people who maybe aren't drawn to it, like others are, if you can just get, get started and you'd be surprised how much you can get lost in a book. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, and so I think we're on my 10th, Yeah. my 10th and final thing. And, um, you know, I think a lot of it is just you know, um, things, and it's really just memories, I think. Mm -hmm. For me, that's a big part of coziness. Like as as an adult, I come home from work, what do I want to do to get cozy? I'll put on warm pajamas, turn on the fireplace, make a, I like to make something that's all in one. I I have a hard Mm -hmm. time making like meat, potato, and vegetable. I'm like, nothing's Mm -hmm. ever warm at the same time. Something cooks too quick. Whereas I love, like you were talking about your dad putting something in a skillet. I love to do like, we do what we call egg roll in a bowl, where it's basically just coleslaw, you know, the bags of coleslaw, you throw that in a pan with either butter or some oil, and you can add chicken, you can add shrimp, you can add beef, Yeah. you you know, crack an egg in there, add some, you know, shredded carrots, some onion, you know, whatever you like, but that's the kind of, and I love to make a homemade soup. Oh, I just, yes. and I'm not much of a, a, of a cook. I don't really enjoy cooking. I don't, I hate grocery shopping. So it's not really my thing, but if I could, if I have all the ingredients there and I just have a big pot, a big you know, mm-hmm. stock pot, I love chopping everything up while something's on TV or music is playing and yes. just, you know, making a big hearty pot of something, you know? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so definitely. I think, you know, there's just, something about things that, you know, you're doing this as an adult to comfort yourself, but I think sometimes just reminiscing to me is the most, if I'm anxious or something, I just love to think about things from a simpler time. You know, when you didn't like, remember how it seemed like it took forever for Christmas to get there. Now you're like, Oh my gosh, it's only two weeks for Christmas and I'm not ready. But when you're a kid, you're like, opening that window every day going, oh my gosh, yes. we still have 10 days, you know, waiting for Santa, just the whole, you know, um, you and you I'm, understand why your parents were stressed. You're like, this is, <laughs> why is Christmas stressful? I just, I, you know, I'm just sitting around waiting for it. Yeah, but, the time flows much differently when you're a child. Yes, it's so true. And, and you don't have the, the stresses and the worries, you know, to mm-hmm. you, it's just all about waiting for Santa and enjoying the traditions. Maybe if you go out and look at Christmas lights or trim the tree yeah. but for parents, you know, it's staying up after everyone goes to sleep and trying to get everything wrapped and, trying so, to make the know, and I, I will share a quote that I'm sure most people have heard, but the quote is as a grown up, I've learned that all the Christmas magic I felt as a kid was really just a mom who loved me. And oh. you do, you feel like it's magic, but really mm-hmm. it's, a real life woman working her butt off <laughs> to make it all special for you yes. and get that exact thing that you want under the tree, you know? So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, Shelly, this has been such a lovely list. Thank yes. you very much for sharing it with everyone. Thank and you. So Shelly is um, on Instagram. It is a private account, but if I think if you can tell, like it's a real person wanting to follow you. Um, yes you're, you're open to that. So thank you uh, very much. And thank you, Kate. Good night. Good night.